G'day everybody and welcome back to another episode of Craft by Tim. Today I've got a very cool project for you guys. So in the world of blacksmithing, often people will say, need a tool, make a tool. In this case, I just kind of want a tool, so I'm going to make it. Okay, so the tool that we're going to be making today is something called a smoke lamp. These are very cool little pieces of kit. I've made a lantern before on the channel, but this, is, this one's a little bit different because this one's purpose isn't actually to provide light. It is a very old tool commonly used by people uh, like gunsmiths and tinsmiths, and now more recently it's even been featured on Alex Steele's channel. Okay. Will Stelter uses a candle to put soot onto a bolster to allow him to figure out where exactly he's meant to file to to get a really nice tight fit up. And this is basically what a smoke lamp is actually designed for. How do you make one? I have a little bit of steel here. Just before we go any further, I would like to point out the fact that I had no idea that this was actually uh, not stainless. I thought this was just a piece of stainless steel. Not that you need stainless for this project, it's just that I didn't think that this was galvanized steel and uh, we are gonna be throwing this in the forge. So um, thankfully I wasn't standing right next to it when it was burning off all that zinc, but uh, yeah. Uh, I did accidentally throw this into the forge. Uh, and then we have a jar with a screw top lid. And this is going to be our reservoir. And I ended up going with one of these because it's got a nice wide base. And obviously this is going to have fire shooting out the top of it so you don't want it to be unstable. So I think this jar is going to be perfect. First thing that we got to do is we're going to cut out this circle that's the same size as our lid. So at this point in time, the outer disc is too big and I don't have enough material around that bulge. Um, I suppose we can call it a boss head or a, a boss 
because it's like a shield boss. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just come in and we're gonna make sure that we have like a nice 45 diameter um, ring that we can cut out from the center. It has the same bulge in the middle, but it'll be slightly smaller. I'm gonna cut out this sort of rectangle here and fold it on this back line. Like it's gonna be my back plate for the wick so that when I have my little gear thing to control how much wick is actually poking through, I'm gonna have a nice backing for it to sit up against so that I can move it easily. As you can tell, most of this is just eyeballing. <laughs> Make quite a bit of progress. Now we gotta work on our little gear thing, which is, there it is. Obviously designed to sit inside here so that it can push the wick up and down as you need. Uh, and it'll run on, I'm gonna use a little bit of brass. Just a little bit of brass to run through the two holes that I've drilled in here. Way too big to fit inside here. So I'm gonna have to remake this again, third time. So this is our new one, it's only about eight mil. So that is going to sit inside here. Yeah, close. The funny thing about doing things without having a proper plan in place is um, often they don't work out the way you think they are. So my problem currently is that that tiny little cog isn't big enough to reach from the center point of my pivot to where the wick is going to be, like the outermost part of the wick is going to be sitting. So I have to come up with a bit of a creative solution. Reforging this and I'm going to forge just on this side of this mouth. Um, of this opening and I'm basically just going to forge in there and this is going to give me enough clearance so that I can get a larger cog in there basically. I'm hoping that this is going to work that way and then after that I'll probably have to adjust the lid again and just remove the same area of material underneath here so I can make sure that I can get a larger cog. Our little key thing 
and we have a face thing. It looks way more like a face now than it did before. You're so happy. This is actually my second key thing because the first one, last that you saw, I tried to solder this. Didn't work at all, actually. So I've come up with a new solution. Originally, I was like, actually, I could probably, I could probably use this. All I gotta do is find a M2 button die. I'll just go out, buy one, and um, I can thread this, and then I can uh, thread my other parts, and then put a nut on it. It'll, it'll be fine. One does not simply buy an M2 button die. Apparently they're very expensive for some reason and ridiculously difficult to find as well. So we've now threaded this one with an M3, which is why we had to remake it. That's insane. That actually works. So just by the fact that this thing works at all is an absolute amazement to me. There is a few things that I had to adjust to get this to work properly. Now, first of all, you'll be able to see that that gear in there significantly wider. And of course, I've actually gone back to more of a sort of sprocket or gear shape. It's not just a hexagon. And that really helped sort of like actually catch on to the fabric of the wick. And then the other little adjustment that I made was just there, spring in there. And that just holds this metal plate so that there's less clearance room for the wick to feed through. And because there's less clearance, it, it, it like sort of pulls it towards the gear a little bit more. But overall, it works actually quite well. Like surprisingly enough, it, it functions as it should. Now, I made a few mistakes. I had to recut the lid and obviously that gear thing was just so much strife but overall I'm actually still quite happy with the way that this turned out it is a little bit finicky I would call this a overall success why is this a decent tool in the world of knife making and and all the rest of it it's actually quite interesting because it's very similar to dicum and marking out fluid it just covers things in a thin layer of soot and because of the design it doesn't matter what sort of shape you have Say, for instance, unfortunately I don't have any projects that I'm currently working on, so I'll use these pair of pliers for a example. So you can see that it's not clean, but you can see that there's no soot build up on there. Now if I light this, just go ahead and adjust that down a little bit. There we go. Build up a bit of soot around the outside there. And because, of course, we're working with low temperatures, this isn't hot. And there's already a build up of soot. It doesn't matter what I'm doing this on, it can be knives, it can be bolsters, that sort of thing, because I'm not going to be able to over temper it with this flame. It's just not hot enough. You can start to sort of see that it's starting to reach up on the inside there, and it's just starting to peek through on the right. So if I do this for a little bit longer, if this area was like a bolster for a knife, I might not actually be able to get dicum or marking fluid in, this, in there properly. So by doing it this way, there you go, there's soot building up on the inside there and I can actually sort of see that through that gap so if I tried to slide that onto whatever blade that it is a uh, tang that I'm working on I can actually start to see the contact points where it's rubbing that soot away and I don't need marking fluid it's probably actually cheaper than buying marking fluid so hopefully this means I can stop using permanent ink markers and that sort of stuff I'll be able to apply it a lot easier especially inside bolsters where you can't always get a permanent ink marker so now we've been through all the fun part of building this however there is another part of this that I have to address and that is this is a very old sort of thing it's an old piece of kit these things are not the safest things in the world 
please do keep that in mind. You don't want to accidentally create yourself a Molotov cocktail. You can also make these things explode. If you fill them with the wrong type of fuel, and I'm not really sure what the wrong type of fuel could be, I'm just going to stick to lamp fuel because I know that that's what this is for. If the flame goes back down in here, and you have something like petrol, and the flame goes back down into there, you're going to have a bad time. It will explode, and it will send glass shards everywhere, and probably mostly into your face and major arteries. So please do be careful with this sort of thing. I know this seems like an awful lot of fun. To be honest, it is. It's fun to sort of try and do some problem solving, coming up with creative solutions to try and get this thing to actually work properly. However, they are dangerous, so do keep that in mind. Um, and just be safe, leave them out of reach to children, all the rest of that normal stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Uh, in the meantime, do remember to stay safe, happy crafting, and as always, cheers.